One of us got sprayed by a skunk last night. Guess which one? Now, my grandfather immigrated to Canada in the mid 1950s and when he left his home in Italy, he brought with him little cuttings of both his grapevines and his fig trees uh, so that when he got a house and got some land in Montreal he was able to plant those um, and eat the same fruits that he would back home so so when my parents left the city and bought a farm they took cuttings from that fig tree in Montreal and that grapevine in Montreal so that they could plant them on this farm um, This one's better. So those grapes that you see behind me are the original cuttings. Well, the original are the cuttings of the cuttings of the cuttings in Montreal. This is getting confusing. So this fig tree that you see up here, this is the original one. This is probably about as old as I am, maybe even a few years older. And we've been housing it here in the greenhouse uh, since we made those cuttings. Um, Originally, it started for fun. Uh, we had one fig tree and we would just eat all the figs. Oh God, that's so good. And um, then we made cuttings of this one and made others. And we had two, we had three, we had four. And then we started to uh, have too many figs. <laughs> if you could believe it, we had too many figs that we didn't know what to do with them. They would fall on the ground, uh, they would rot, and it was just like a terrible thing to watch. Um, so recently what we've been doing is offering them up to some of our stores, selling them uh, by the case. Um, and that really caught on because local figs, I'm, I'm zone 4B here, like that's, that's crazy. Um, but they are delicious and they don't travel a lot. So I'll pick these and generally we'll deliver them to the store the day after. So they are super fresh. So then we started to branch out. We started to make more cuttings. Uh, we started to get different figs. So now we have about eight trees, roughly the size of this one behind me. Um, and I want to show you something. These figs are all in large pots and we try to keep them here as long as possible, but they are trees, so they want to grow. And, and as you saw in the previous shot, this one has small leaves and the figs are getting a little small on it. Um, so we need bigger pots, which is where this happy little fellow comes in. So we will be repotting this one and hopefully more. The problem is when you put them in bigger pots, the, the roots get bigger and the trees will grow taller. And we're kind of limited in here with, um, with size for now. Uh, I do have plans so that we're gonna grow these much taller and we're probably gonna double or triple our yield in figs um, in the coming years. But more on that later. For now, let's get to the grapes. I'll show you those. Now, as I mentioned before, same with the figs, these grapes are also direct descendants from my uh, grandfather's little vineyard in Italy. Um, I don't know what variety they are. Uh, Italians back in the day didn't really keep that kind of information on hand. Uh, we know they're grapes. Other than that, I don't know. Um, they, I guess they would be close to what we would consider a Niagara grape, but these are larger and much sweeter, which makes them a real hit uh, with some of our stores because as far as I know, uh, we're the only ones that are selling this specific um, type of grape. What's in this greenhouse that I'm standing here? It, these grapes are the only ones that are producing? Well, not, not exactly, but kind of, it's, it's a little complicated. 
Um, it's actually not complicated at all. Uh, we used to have two large uh, tunnels outside, greenhouses, um, and they collapsed in an ice storm. If you haven't heard me drone on and on and on about it in previous episodes, we lost those and what they did, they housed um, more of these grapes, a lot actually, and we used to sell them and they did pretty well actually. Um, so they've been just using all their energy to stay alive and whatever energy they have left to produce fruit just gets decimated by bugs. This year, it was a late year for the grapes and that kind of helped us because the rose chafer, which is the bug that will generally attack the, um, the flowers and the uh, small fruit, well, they had already passed maturity by then. Uh, they had come and gone and the grapes hadn't flowered yet. So we are gonna get a little bit of fruit out of that. Um, but I will be putting greenhouses back up. More on that later. What I wanna do today for this short little video, obviously, duh, we're gonna pick some grapes and we're gonna pick some figs. Uh, so let's get to that right now. <laughs> So that is a small look into our uh, fig and grape production. Now, I don't usually do this. I took some time out today to do that harvest. What I've been doing is the third and hopefully final weeding on the burdock. It is miserable, so I haven't really been filming it. No one's interested in that. No one wants to see me cry. Um, so it is good to take some time out and do this. Now, I know if you go on the internet or type in uh, most profitable greenhouse uh, crop or um, best use of greenhouse, smartest use of greenhouse and hit enter, uh, you are not gonna see anyone going on and on about how you absolutely need to put grapes and figs under your greenhouse if you consider yourself to be a smart and profitable farmer. But here's how I see it. Uh, I could do whatever I want. I didn't get into farming. I left a desk job because I was told what to do all the time and I didn't like that. So I'm gonna do what I want. No, but seriously, um, you gotta have some fun. And this for me is fun. It gets a, it's a piece of my past, a piece of my family history. Um, it's, it's probably not what you would think of when you would think of putting in greenhouses, but they do bring in money. It does bring us money. And when these grapes behind me are producing, which they will if they have greenhouses over them, um, 
it's not a bad little crop and there's no weeding. The only thing we got to keep on track of is the pruning of the, uh, of the suckers. Um, and other than that, it's, it's smooth. And what we also do to maximize our uh, profitability here on Jody Farms is we actually seed medicinals underneath here. Uh, so crops that need shade like Gota Cola, we use as a ground crawl under here. It snuffs out the weeds, um, so there's no weeding there. And it also uh, brings us another revenue stream from each of these greenhouses, as well as in the front, there is some land that we till up that they doesn't have grapes and we'll use that for stuff like papaya or passiflora or so on. So there is profitability there and it is fun. These ones, I can't wait for them to produce. Yeah, check this out. They've already started producing. Not bad, huh? See you next time.